Hello everyone, trying something a little bit unorthodox. I am recording a game that I do not intend to put on video, or did not intend to put on video. This is just for practice for me to tr practice a new setup for Stratomatic. Um, in the previous video I did this basic setup and it was using the Stratomatic score sheet, but I'm back to my old score sheet I used years ago for my 1977 White Sox replay and I seem to it's just more it's more home for me I, I used this kind of score sheet for years a friend of mine from work did this for me in Excel a long time ago and I've always liked it and uh, I took it to I took hundreds of copies of individual pages of these two pages both double-sided and took them to Staples and had them uh, put it in a book form for me and uh, that's what I use for my White Sox replay. And this one is just a, a spare one, not used for anything. But uh, I can use it for this because I've got lots of pages on here to uh, to fill up if I want to. So what I'm contemplating doing is I like Stratovac so much that I really want to play it more than just the Saturday game of the week. I kind of miss it you know, during the middle of the week. So if you remember. Uh, last year, I did something called the Demolition League, which was a takeoff on what Tenacious Earl did with his Tenacious League, where I did the 2015 season, picked 10 teams, uh, and played a 54-game schedule for each team, and then had playoffs and so forth. Well, I'm doing something similar, or at least I'm going to attempt to do something similar, uh, but it's primarily for my own digestion. For the 2023 cards, I bought the cards, and I want to use them for something. So I picked 10 teams and uh, got a schedule and everything else. So now I'm going to go ahead and, and play the first game. I mean, I don't know if I'll stick with this or not because it's not a full-fledged hardcore project like the Demolition League was the first time. But you never know. It might catch on. I don't know. So the first game is going to be the Pittsburgh Pirates and the Chicago Cubs. And it's, it's not as played lineups, but I did try to follow at least on the first game, sort of follow what they did most of the time. Uh, starting pitchers for today's game, Marcus Stroman for the Cubs, Mitch Keller for the Pittsburgh Pirates. Pitching factor with the catcher, Stroman is a plus one. as Stroman is a plus three, but Gomes is a minus two, so that makes it a plus one. Keller is a minus one. He's a zero, but uh, Hedges is a minus one, so that's the factor there. Ballpark effects for Wrigley Field. Uh, singles for lefties are 1 to 11, for righties are 1 to 5, home runs are 1 to 6 for both. My penmanship stinks, I readily admit it. Uh, this pen of mine maybe is not the best either. Uh, and I made a couple mistakes, I had to white out some stuff and, and, and or not white out, but correction tape some stuff and fix it up. So leading off for the Pirates will be Tucepito Marcano at short. Brian Reynolds in left, McCutcheon the DH, Santana at first, uh, Palacios in right field, Josh Palacios in right field, Key Brian Hayes at third, Jack Zuwinski in center, G. Juan Bay is at second, and Austin Hedges is the catcher. For the Cubs, Nico Horner is at second, Dansby Swanson is at short, Ian Happs in left, Cody Bellinger is at center, Trey Mancini is the DH, Jan Gomes catching, Eric Hosmer at first, Patrick Wisdom at third, and in right field is Miles Mastroboni, or Mastrobuoni. It's B-O-U-N-I. I'm not sure how it's pronounced. So I'm just going to go with Mastroboni. So I'm trying. As these are experimental stuff, so I'm going to try it this way and see how it turns out. We'll put the, when the visiting team is batting, I'll put the pitcher here and the batter here. When the home team's batting, pitcher here, batter here, so you can see the score sheet. So. Marcus Stroman finishing up the warm-up tosses. And I do have Chicago Cub colored dice. Still doing the Super Advance, so that has not changed one iota. Um, and if you're looking for the other, if you're curious of the other teams I chose for the league besides these two, we I picked ten teams that were not in the first demolition league. That was the criteria. And then, of course, I tried to divvy it up over National League, American League, and Divisions. So these are two National League teams that are playing each other. 
The other National League teams took one team from the East, and that was the Miami Marlins. And two teams from the West that took the San Diego Padres and the Los Angeles Dodgers. So those three teams plus the Cubs and Pirates make up the five National League teams. The five American League teams that took two from the AL East took the Baltimore Orioles and the Toronto Blue Jays. From the Central, I took the Detroit Tigers and the Minnesota Twins. And from the West, the lowly Oakland A's. I was just kind of curious to see how they would do against a league of teams that have a couple of hundred game winners and just see how bad they would actually do because you never know how bad they might do. But it's all in fun. I mean, just like I said, it's just something to do so I can get some more strat on uh, besides just the Saturday game of the week. And like I said, I imagine most of this will just be for my own digestion. I'm just using the first game as a sample to test my setup and see how it turns out. Now, if I play this and go back and look at the recording and I think that it all is terrible, then you'll never see this. So if you're seeing it, that means at least I thought it was decent enough to show out there. So anyway, we got Marcus Stroman against Tucipito Marcano for the Pirates. In real life, O'Neill Perez was the leadoff hitter and shortstop on opening day for them, but he only had like 30 at-bats, so I'm trying to use guys that that I have carded. For one thing, I don't have O'Neill Cruz carded. He's not coming with a card. You'd have to get him off the computer. And so we're using Marcano in his stead. So here's Stroman. 2-8 to Marcano. He's going to pop it up to second base. So Marcano out on strikes, and somebody out there, now you will hear a couple of things. One is the faint, my air conditioner is running because it's 90, it was 98 degrees today. Uh, it's supposed to be 98 degrees tomorrow, and tonight, this late, you know, I think I'm recording this at uh, a little after 9 p.m., and it's our, it's still over 80-something degrees and humid. And I'm, up, I'm upstairs, and heat rises, so have to have that if I don't want to pass out. Uh, they're also, one of the neighbors uh, thinks it's still July 4th, and it's might every once in a while shoot off a firework, so you might hear something like that as well. All right, here's Brian Reynolds, the left fielder. 3-8 for Reynolds. That's a walk, so Brian Reynolds will draw the base on balls. Now, he is he needs a 5 to get the lead, and again, the combination of Stroman and... Gomes produces a plus one. So if he gets the lead, he's a 19, plus one's a 20. Being held makes him an 18. So if he can get that lead, it's a one to 18, but he's got to roll a five. It's the only way he can do it. And he's six. He just missed it, so he can't get the lead. He will be held, but he won't go anywhere. And that'll bring up Andrew McCutcheon, who is acting as the designated hitter in this game. Stroman, 3-8. Everything's off the batter card. That's another walk. So back-to-back -back walks from Reynolds and McCutcheon. Puts runners at first and second. And already I see I forgot to roll the Havoc roll because I didn't do it in the last game because the 1988 cards didn't have this balk and wild pitch information. So I'll get back to doing that. So here's Santana, Carlos Santana, first baseman. 6-5, we're finally off the pitcher card. Switch it to bang left. 6-5 is a ground ball shortstop X. Ground ball shortstop X. Uh, nobody was being held. So don't worry about anything with uh, the shortstop Swanson. Swanson is a 1-E-12. It's a possible double play to get out of this. 1 and a 7 might do it. Let's see here. A 1 and a 7 is a G-1. And that is a 14, and he is an E12. So we go over to the shortstop, E12. There's a 15 and an 18 and a 3, but no 14. So it will be a good 6-4-3 double play. And that's going to take care of the Pirates here in the first inning. Like I said, this is a new setup for me, so if I'm a little sluggish in the beginning at least, bear with me. All right, now since the Pirates, our Cubs are going to be batting, we're going to move everything up a little higher. Mitch Keller is your pitcher, and Nico Horner is your batter. Nico Horner, second baseman. We get a 4-11, and that's a fly ball to right field. 
one away as Horner is retired. And that'll bring up Dansby Swanson, shortstop. Keller, 1-8 to Swanson, and yet another walk. So a one-out walk to Swanson. He will be held. It is a minus-one pitcher-catcher combo, so if he gets the lead with this four, he would be a 1-15 to 15 trying to steal. Uh, they'll go ahead and try it. You've got to get a four. It's the only way you can do it. He can't, so he will hold, and they will hold him on. So he will be held at first, which means with the switch hitter hat batting, the shortstop, Marcano, is responsible for holding the runner. 3-6, and that's a yet another walk. So we're walk crazy in this game. Four walks in the first inning already. And that will bring up Cody Bellinger. Situation still remains the same. They will hold Swanson on at second base, so again, the shortstop is responsible, Marcano. Keller, 3-6, that doesn't matter, it's a single two stars, and an RBI single for Cody Bellinger will score Swanson and move Hap to third base. So now runners are at the corners with only one out, and the designated hitter Trey Mancini is your batter. Keller needs to get out of this, the two walks were all his doing though, so, you know, this is the way it is. Now, Cody Bellinger, if he wants to get the lead, it's a two through five to get the lead. To nine, he does not get the lead. He will stand pat. He will be held. And with Mancini batting, that means the second baseman, Bay, is responsible for holding the runner. Keller, six, eight, and that's a strikeout. A big strikeout there for Keller. That is out number two. And that will send up the catcher, Jan Gomes. Nothing on the Havoc roll. Here's Keller to Gomes. 2-5, and that is a single two stars again. So Gomes with a two-out single will score Hap and move Bellinger to third base. It's 2 nothing Cubs. Gomes will not be held at first base. Not a very good runner. And here's Eric Hosmer, the first baseman. Keller can't get out of the first inning without damage. 5-6 against a lefty struck him out, so he finally gets out of it. But uh, not before the Cubs pick up two runs. So let's see here. They do it on two hits, and they left two on. Cubs had no hits and left two on. So keep those for my track the total for the whole game. Make it easier at the end. So at the end of one, it's the Cubs two and the Pirates nothing. And Marcus Stroman, your pitcher. And Josh Palacios, the right fielder, will be leading things off for the Buccos. 4-6, and that is a strikeout. Marcus Stroman, his first strikeout of the game. Brings up Key Brian Hayes, third baseman. Get a 1-10, and that is a pop-up to short. Pops it up to... Dansby Swanson for out number two. And that'll bring up center fielder Jack Zuwinski. We get a 5-9 against the lefty, and that's a double to left field. So how about that? A solid double for Zuwinski. Two-out double. And Zuwinski will be held at second base for g Bay. g Bay is your batter, trying to get the run home. Shortstop Swanson responsible for holding the runner at second. 3-9, and that's a strikeout, so it doesn't matter. Bay is out of there on strikes. No runs, a hit, no errors, and a man left. We go to the bottom of the second. It is still 2-0 in favor of the Cubbies. And Mitch Keller will try to do better than he did last time. Patrick Wisdom is your batter. Third baseman. 110, and that is a ground ball to short. 
Marcano will take it. One down for Miles Mastroboni in right field for this one. 4-7 against the left-hander is a 1-7 to seven single. That is a 7, so Mastroboni gets the one-out single, and he's got, he's got a good chance to get the lead, so they're going to let him go for it. He needs a 2 through 5, an 11, or a 12. That's an 8, so he does not get the lead. He will stand pat, but he will be held, obviously. And Nico Horner, your batter. So Nico Horner will bat. Keller, 3-6 to Horner. And that is a 1-7 to seven double. That's a 2. It's a double 2 stars, so the run will not score. Just puts runners at 2nd and 3rd. And Keller is in big time trouble. 2nd and 3rd. Nobody out for Dansby Swanson. You're already trailing 2-0. They're going to bring the infield in. See if they can choke the run. 3-8 for Swanson. As a strikeout, that's a good start. Strikes out Swanson for one away for Ian Happ. Infield is still in. Infield is still in. With the one out, trying to choke the run. 6-7, switch it back left. 6-7 is another strikeout. So Keller gets back-to-back -back K to try to help get himself get out of it. But he's got Cody Bellinger coming up. And they're going to walk Cody Bellinger intentionally with first base open and take their chances with the righty-on-righty -righty matchup of Trey Mancini. So just seems to be the play to make. Mancini not quite the hitter that Bellinger is, so but a walk will produce a run, so that's the other thing you got to worry about. Keller, 3-9, but he strikes him out, so he ends up striking out the side. So... No runs on two hits, no errors, and they left them loaded. At the end of two, still 2 nothing Cubbies over the Buckos. And Austin Hedges will lead things off for the Pirates. Number nine hitter. Get Stroman, 5-7. That's a leadoff walk. Sometimes leadoff walks will come back to bite you. So that's a leadoff walk. Hedges will not be held on. He's not a very good base runner or stealer, so he will not be held. Nothing on the havoc. Here's Marcano. He popped a second his first trip. 2-4 for Marcano. He's going to fly it to left. And that's one away. So Marcano is retired. Brings up Brian Reynolds, switch hitting left fielder. Nothing on the habit. 1 4 to Reynolds is a ground ball, second base C. That will move the runner hedges to second base on the 4 3 ground out with the C. So the runner advances with two outs. Brings up a clutch situation, or as our friend Jeffrey Goodman would say, a clutch situation for Andrew McCutcheon. Stroman to McCutcheon. 6-8. Stroman, 6-8, struck him out. And that's going to end the inning. So the leadoff walk does not come back to bite the Cubbies. No runs, no hits, no errors, and one left on the walk. We go to the bottom of the third. Still 2 nothing Cubbies, and actually the Pirates are probably fortunate it is only 2 nothing. It could be a lot worse with all the hits and walks that's been going on. But Keller has struck out five. Six of the outs have been strikeouts. So when you can get those outs without anybody advancing, that certainly helps the cause. So here's Gomes. He singled his first trip. 6-4, Keller. That's a ballpark single check. And for a right-hander, it's a 1-5. to five. That's a 4. It will be a single for Jan Gomes. Beat the odds with that low D20. And now that brings up Hosmer. Gomes not going to be held, obviously. Doesn't run well. That's a 1. So a chance of a wild pitch for Keller. His wild pitch rating is a 5. He does not uncork one. It is blocked by Hedges. So now he'll pitch to Hosmer. 
four six against the left-hander. One to ten's a double. But that's a 17, so it's just a fly to center field. And hauling in out there is Zwinski for out number one. Brings up Patrick Wisdom. Nothing on the Havoc this time. Wisdom grounded to short his first trip. Keller, 5-7. That's a ground ball, second base X. Nobody's being held, so that means Bay is going to keep his full defensive prowess, which is a 3-E-22. So a 3-E-22 for Bay. 3-3, three and a three, that's problematic. 3-3 three and a three is an SI-1. That's a 5, so it's a rare play on an SI-1. So SI-1 rare play with runner on first. The batter hits a line drive, which hits the runner. The runner is called out. Batter gets on first with a single. So Wisdom hits a ground ball that hits Gomes trying to go to second. So Gomes is out three unassisted because the first baseman is the closest fielder to him. But Wisdom gets credit for the base hit. So with two outs now and a runner at first. And that will send up Mastroboni. Wisdom could try to, well, if he gets the lead, if he does get the lead, it's be a 1 to 12. So it's not really the best odds in the world. But So they're going to let Mastroboni hit. Nothing on the Havoc. That is a 2-2. Two 2-2 -two. Two -two against... The right-hander is a solid, clean-as-a-baby's-butt home run. Kaboom, as somebody once said. Miles Mastroboni. Now that's why we didn't send Wisdom. Mastroboni comes through with a home run. A 2-2 two -two against a righty. It's right there. So Mastroboni. He is playing for the injured, injured Chicago Cub, the much more touted Saya Suzuki, he will be uh, playing later on in the season because he was he started the season on the IL. So I'm, I've got him on the roster, but I'm not starting him. He's available to pinch hit, but that's about it. So Miles Mastroboni, a two-run homer to score wisdom, and the score is now four to nothing. Cubs and Keller in trouble. Here's Nico Horner. Two out spaces clear. Four, six, and that's a, a solid single for Nico Horner. You know what's bad when your leadoff guy is hit in all three innings? That tells you as a pitcher you're not doing what you need to do. Horner's going to try to get the lead. Two through five or a 12. Do not, they cannot get the lead off of Keller for whatever reason, so he will stand. Patty will be held. And here's Dansby Swanson. Keller. 5-9, and that's a strikeout to end the inning. It's feast or famine for Keller. He either gives up hits or he gets strikeouts, seemingly. So they get a break on the hit batter with, with, a base, with a batted ball hits the runner. They get a, a break there. But they don't get a break on Master Boney's two-run homer. So it's going to be two runs on four hits, no errors, and one left. And at the end of three, it is the Cubs' four I told you my penmanship is lousy. The Cubs four and the Pirates nothing. And the guy that's loving all of this is Marcus Stroman. He's getting lots of run support to work with. Carlos Santana is your batter. Getting to a double play his first time up. Four, six, and he's going to strike out this time around. So that didn't do him much better either. Strikes out Santana. Santana trying to change his evil ways, but he couldn't do it there. And here is Palacios. 110 for Palacios. That's a ballpark home run shot. 1 to 6, and that's a 1, so that is gone. Palacios goes deep here at Wrigley on the home run. Ballpark home run with that D20 being a 1. That is a home run for Josh Palacios, and the Pirates are on the board finally. 4 to 1. Trying to make a game of it. Here's Key Brian Hayes. 4-11, and that's a ballpark. I'm sorry, over here. 4-11 is a ground ball to short. Looking at 5-11. Ground ball to short for out number two. And that will bring up Suwinski, center fielder. 
two outs in the bases cleared. 6-9 against the lefty. That's trouble. 1-3 to three is a double. 4-20 to 20 is a single. That's a 9. So it's a two-out single for Zawinski. He has singled and doubled. So he's certainly doing well in his first game. Down 4-1. to one. He's not going to try to get the lead. They will hold him, though, because if, he does, if they don't hold him, he'll get the lead automatically and have a good chance to steal. So they're going to hold him on. And that brings up G1 Bay. Stroman, 6-7 against the left-hander. Ground ball, second base, X. That is going to be second baseman Horner. And Nico Horner at second base is a 1-E8. So we know he's going to get to it as a 1. 1 and a 10 is a G1. So it will be a fielder's choice to second base. Possible double play if there were less than two outs. That is a 16. And he is an E... 8. E8 and a 16. E8 and a 16 for a second baseman. There is a 16 right here. Under the E8, there is a 16 right there. One base error on Nico Horner. So the inning will continue. E4 to keep the inning going for Austin Hedges, the catcher. Stroman should be out of the inning, but he's not. He's got to pitch around the air. Stroman to Hedges. 1-3, and that's a foul. I'm sorry, 1-3 is a low max. Line out to third, but there are already two outs, so no double or triple plays uh, going to happen there. There's just the uh, regular line out to end the inning. But the Pirates do get on the board thanks to the home run from Palacios. Get a run on two hits, one error, and two left. So we go to the bottom of the fourth. It's 4-1 to one favor of the Cubbies. And Mitch Keller has to settle in or he won't be in this game too much longer. Here's Ian Happ. 4-6 against a left-hander. 1-10 to is a double. That's an 18, though, so it will be a fly to center. And there's one away. So one down for Cody Bellinger. Cody Bellinger. 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 Singled and been intentionally walked. 4-4 four, four against the lefties. Ground ball third base X. That's Key Brian Hayes. And Key Brian Hayes is a 1-E8. So with nobody on base with a 1, you don't really have to roll the D20 because you know he gets to it. We're just checking the E8. E8 and a 9. Should be okay, I think. E8, yep, 9's okay. So it's a good play for Key Brian Hayes. Take care of Bellinger. Brings up Trey Mancini. He's 0 for 2 with 2Ks. Keller, 4-6, and that's a single. So a two-out single for Mancini. He will not be held. He's a terrible runner. He didn't have any steal attempts at all in the 23 seasons. He will not be held. So that brings up Jan Gomes, who's two for two. Five, eight against a right-hander is a ground ball third base B, so Key Brian Hayes will throw to Bay at second base for the force. It ends up being a fielder's choice. No runs a hit, no errors, and one left. And we go to the fifth, and it is still four to one Cubbies. Marcus Stroman, the batter, uh, the pitcher, will face the top of the order. Tucipito, Tucipita Marcano. I'm not sure how to pronounce the first name. Tucipita is what I'm calling him. I don't know what, how it's actually pronounced. 5'11 left-handed is a ballpark single check for a lefty. It's 1 to 11. That's an 18, though, so it's going to be a line out to second base for out number one. That brings up Brian Reynolds. I know how his name is pronounced, obviously. Stroman, 3-9 against a right-hander for Reynolds is a strikeout. 3-10 would have been a straight, would have been a ballpark home run that would have been gone, but 3-9 is a strikeout. So, so as Frankie Valley once said, so close yet so far. All right, Stroman now, 4-3. And that's a ground ball pitcher X. He is a 
2E0. So you can't make an error. We're just checking to see if he gets to it or not. 2 and a 9. 2 and a 9 for the pitcher. Let's check the range on here. 2 and a 9 is a G3, so he will get to it. Obviously, it's an E0. There's no chance of an error. So it's a 1-2-3 inning for a Stroman. And we go to the bottom of the fifth. Still 4-1 to one Cubbies. And both pitchers have 6 for their fatigue, so they're still okay for now. Eric Hosmer will lead things off for the Cubbies. He is 0 for 2, struck out and flew to center. 6-9, and that's going to strike out again. So Hosmer, two strikeouts. Here's Wisdom. He singled his last time up and scored from the Master Pony homer. 1-4, and look at that. It's got three home runs here, but the 1-4 is a ground out to short. So Keller dodged one there, 1-4, one, right here, ground ball to short in between three home runs. So got a break there if you're Keller. And here's Master Boney, speaking of home runs, he, hit that, he found that 2-2 two, two slot to his liking. This one's a 3-10, he's going to fly to left. And it's the first 1-2-3 inning of the game for Mitch Keller. So we go to the sixth, 4-1 to one Cubbies, and this is the fatigue inning for both pitchers. So we'll keep an eye on that for both pitchers as this is their fatigue inning. Stroma to Santana. 2-8 for Santana. He's going to pop. All he's hits in column 2 and he pops to short. He is now 0 for 3. He is Santana. Still can't change his evil ways. And here is Palacios. He homered for the only pirate run. 3-7. This time he's going to fly to center. Not quite deep enough for a home run as Bellinger puts it away. And that'll bring up Key Brian Hayes. Hayes is 0 for 2. He's popped to short and grounded to short. 3-6. He's going to strike out this time. And that's another 1-2-3 inning for Stroman. Stroman is now retired 7 in a row. So we go to the bottom of the 6 with the score still 4-1. Stroman had nothing against his fatigue, so he can continue. Keller, the uh, pitcher, this is his fatigue inning. And we're facing the top of the order, and Nico Horner to start the sixth inning. Keller, 2-8 to Nico. He's going to pop it to short. One away. Bring up Dansby Swanson. Keller to Swanson. 6-10, and that's a fly to center field. That is out number two. Out number two, and that's going to send up Ian Happ. Keller, 4-7, switch hitter bang left is a 1-7 single, but that's an 8. So it's a ground ball to first. Santana will step on the bag himself. And it's another 1-2-3 inning for Keller. He has retired seven in a row also. So you think they're going to get tired, but they seem to be getting stronger. So after six innings, it's 4-1. to one. And now Stroman back out, of course, had nothing against this point of weakness. So he's still in excellent shape. And Zuwinski is your batter. Jack Zuwinski. Zuwinski is two for two, a double and a single. Three five, and that is a one to six single, but that's a ten, so he's going to ground it to first. It's a C, so just the little homebrew rule I like to make is whenever there's a C to first base, I always say the pitcher flips to the, the first baseman flips to the pitcher covering. I think I got that from Tribe fan, Clee baseball fan now, but it used to be Tribe fan Tim. So just kind of do that. Same with uh, first base X chances, same thing. Just my thinking is on something like that, it's a wide-ranging play, and it's just I'm just trying to visualize it, that's all. It really doesn't matter. Stroman to Bay, 5-7, and that's a ground ball to second. Traditional ground ball, 4-3. to three. And that's nine in a row retired by Stroman. And here's Hedges. 
Pirates can't get anything going. 1-8, and that's another strikeout. So 10 in a row retired by Marcus Stroman as we've hit the seventh inning stretch here in Chicago. Seventh inning stretch with a score of four to one. And that's going to give me a chance to stand up and stretch and check the focus on the phone and make sure everything is still showing up okay. I know it's been kind of bumping the, sc the score book a little bit, so I want to make sure nothing got out of whack there. Uh, looks like we got a lot of room to the right, so if I move the cards over this way, you can still see it pretty good, at least from what I'm looking at. And if I have to, I can move it over even further. Uh, let's see, let's bring it down just a hair. So I think that's going to work okay, just like that. Uh, I also added a second light in here, so hopefully there's lots of good light here. That's another thing I want to check is the lighting. Sometimes in my videos, I've noticed the lighting's been a little iffy, so trying to improve that. The sound would be better without the air conditioner, but i got to have that or else I'd be passing out up here. So, All right, so bottom of the seventh we go, and Mitch Keller still in there facing Cody Bellinger. Bellinger. Singled, intentional walk, and grounded to third. 311 for Bellinger is another walk. This one unintentional. But he's aboard, and he's going to try to get the lead. Needs a 2 through 5 to do so. Cannot get the lead, but he will be held. And that'll bring up Mancini. 1 for 3. Whoops. Sua dice is the white die stuck to my hand. Didn't get through there. Even with the air on, it's a little sticky in here and because it's been hot up here all day during work. So this evening, it's going to take a while for this to cool things down. So Keller to Mancini, 112. And that's another walk. So back-to-back -back walks. And now the bullpen for the Pirates is going to start to stir. And we'll look at who's available in the bullpen. For the Pirates, they have a lot of guys. Seven bullpen arms. We have Colin Holderman, a right-hander. We have Dowry Moretta, a right-hander. We have uh, Dwayne Underwood, a right-hander. Johan Ramirez, a right-hander. And their closer, David Bednar, a right-hander. A couple of lefties, they have Rob Sastrazzini, and Jose Hernandez. And yeah, I'm butchering these names because I did not go ahead of time to try to figure out pronunciations. But they are the bullpen arms, and with the Hosmer, Wisdom, and Mastry, Mastroboni coming up, Mastroboni is a lefty as well. They got double barrel action in the bullpen. They have left-hander Jose Hernandez and right-hander Colin Holderman, both loosing in the bullpen. Case Keller starts to fade further. Gomes is a potential double play chance, though. 4-8, and that is a strikeout. He's a dot here, but he's not tired yet, so strikeout is good, and he needed it. One away for Hosmer. Now, do you bring in Hernandez to face the lefty Hosmer? I think you kind of have to. So that's going to be it for Keller. Can't close the book on Keller yet, but... Uh, we can say he pitched six in the third innings, and he faced 33 batters. As far as hits, he'd give up two, four, eight, nine hits. Don't know about the walks. I mean, don't know about the earned runs yet. The one home run he gave up to Master Bioni. He's walked one, two, three, four. So he's walked four. Didn't throw any wild pitches, didn't hit anybody, didn't balk. Uh, let's see, strikeouts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight strikeouts. And Hernandez is going to get the call. Jose Hernandez. So Hernandez is coming on to be the new pitcher in place of the departed Keller. So Hernandez it is, and on the 2023 season, 
He was 1-3 of the 497 ERA. He is a lefty. He has a plus 5 hold rating. So that doesn't help for holding base runners, but I'm not sure the Cubs are looking to run right now. Hedges is a minus 1, so that makes it a plus 4. So they went from a minus 1 hold to a plus 4 hold. And now, lefty on lefty. They're really looking for the double play is what they're looking for. Hernandez to Hosmer. 3-6 against the lefty. 1-8 is a single. That's a 19. It's a ground ball, second base B. So it's going to be a 4-6 fielder's choice as they will get Mancini going to second base. However, going to third base is Bellinger, and at first is Hosmer. Of course, Hosmer will not be held. And here's Patrick Wisdom. He's already homered. And, of course, remember 2023, three batter rules. So Hernandez does have to face three batters or get to the end of an inning, either, whichever comes first. Uh, can't be removed before that. So Hernandez facing Wisdom. He's got to hope Wisdom doesn't find his column one. Look, the blue die never went through, so let's redo that again. It's kind of a sewer dice. He did find column one. 111 is a ballpark home run, but it's only one to six. But that is a six. That is a six right there. And that's going to be a second, a second home run for the Cubs. Patrick Wisdom, a three-run shot, had just blown this thing wide open. Patrick Wisdom, a three-run bomb. So now we can close the book on Keller. Keller's responsible for five of those runs. And Hernandez is responsible for two of those runs. But it is now a seven-to-one ball game. And they've kind of blown this thing wide open, which can happen. Hernandez now to Mastrobioni, or Mastroboni. Mastrobuoni, I'm not sure how it's pronounced, 6-5 strikeout. And that's going to end the inning. If I'm going to do this, I need to go, if I'm going to do it going forward, I really need to go and learn some of these names, which will be part of my homework. But this was kind of off the cuff, so I don't really think about it right at the moment. So for the Cubbies, they get three runs. They do it on just the one hit. The only hit was the home run, and uh, nobody left. But three runs, and those two walks to lead off the inning were huge. And it is now 7-1 to one as we go to the eighth. And the Cubs are going to say, all right, Marcus, you did seven solid, so we're going to go ahead and let you have the rest of the game off. So Stroman is going to be capped at seven innings pitch. He's going to face 27 batters. He's going to give up one, two, four hits, one run, which was the homer by Palacios. So the home run. Now let's check his walks and strikeouts. He walked two here and one here, so he had three walks. And strikeouts, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven strikeouts. So that's the final line on Stroman. 70 is pitch, four hits, one run, three walks, seven strikeouts, and of course he is in line to be the winner. And now let's look at the available Cub bullpen for who they have. They have Michael Fulmer. They have Michael Rucker. These are all right-handed pitchers. Brad Boxberger. Julian Merriweather. Keegan Thompson. Mark Leiter. And their closer, Albert Alzale. They're all right-handed, so... It's not a matter of bringing in a righty or lefty. It's, that's all they got is righties. So let's see who they want to bring in. They're going to bring in. Now it's a 7-1 to one game, so it's not really, you know, you may not want to use your best guy. You might want to save him for future games without giving the farm away. So they're going to go to Michael Fulmer. Michael Fulmer. On the 2023 season, he was 3-5 and five with a 4-4-2 ERA and two saves. So Fulmer, it is. He will start the eighth inning against the top of the order, Marcano, Reynolds, and McCutcheon. Now Marcano is a 2.33 hitter, so they could pinch hit for him if they wish. So we'll show the bench players for the Pirates who they have available. From the left side, they have G-Man Choi, who later went to San Diego. 
And from the right-hand side, they have Connor Joe and Jason DeLay and switch hitter Rodolfo Castro, who later went to Philadelphia. So there's not a whole lot on the bench that's any better than Marcano, to be quite honest with you. The only one that's better are, is DeLay and Connor. They're both righties. Marcano is a lefty, so I think they're going to just go ahead and stick with Marcano. Even though he is 0 for 3, he is a lefty, so they're going to play the percentages and just go with that. Fulmer to Marcano, 6-6 six, six against the lefty, and he walks. So Marcano draws the leadoff walk on the 6-6 six, six result. Of course, with the score being 7-1, to one, he's not going anywhere, and they're not holding anybody. Not, not when it's 7-1 to one in the eighth inning. So here's Reynolds. They will do this. The Havoc roll is still in place. That's a one, so it's a wild pitch automatically from from Fulmer because he's got the 20 up there. So he does uncork the wild pitch. So Fulmer will be charged with the wild pitch. And now he will face Reynolds. 3-3 three, three for Reynolds is a ballpark home run chance. And it's again 1-6. to six. That's a 3. It's a two-run home run from Brian Reynolds on the ballpark home run chance. And just like that, it's 7-3. to three. So maybe the Cubbies have to take this a little more seriously. As it's now 7-3 to three and Fulmer is getting stunned. But he's got to face three batters. So he can't come out yet. Got to face Andrew McCutcheon. That's a 6-6. Six, six. He's going to walk McCutcheon. So now he's faced three batters, giving up two walks and a home run. They'll give him one more chance against Santana. McCutcheon will not be held. He's not going to try to go anywhere. So Fulmer against Santana. 5-12 against the lefty. Switch your bang left is a ground ball second base X. Second baseman is Nico Horner. He's a 1-E8, so chance for a double play. He doesn't make an error. 1-11 is a G1. 1-11 is a G1, and that is a 6. As an E8, there is no 6, so it will be a 4-6-3 double play. Turned by Nico Horner. And by... Shortstop Swanson. So a 4-6-3 double play gets two quick outs. And now they're going to have Fulmer try to get through the inning. But the base is clear now for Palacios. 3-5, and he struck him out. So Fulmer recovers after a very slow start. He's going to go one inning. That's all he's going. He faced five batters. He gave up the home run, which the hit, which was the home run, the two runs because of the walk. Oops, because of the walk. He did strike somebody out. Here's a walk and a strikeout. So two runs for the Pirates makes the score 7-3. to three As we go to the bottom of the eighth. And that will be all for Fulmer. And now for the Cubbies. They will face a new pitcher. As that's it for Jose Hernandez. So they will go to a right-hander out of the pen. Holderman. To pitch the bottom of the eighth, Holderman 0 for 3, 0 and 3 with a 3.86 ERA and two saves. So Colin Holderman will be on for Hernandez. He pitched one inning. I'm sorry, he pitched uh, two thirds of an inning. My bad, two thirds of an inning. Gave up the home run and two of those runs. That's a hit. He only faced three batters. He did get a strikeout. And now Holderman is on to pitch the bottom of the eighth against the top of the order, Nico Horner. So Holderman facing Nico Horner. Horner is two for four, single, double. And he's looking for more, 3-6. And he's going to get more, 3-6 against the righty. One to seven is a double. That's a 14. It'll be another single. So a three for five game for Nico Horner. Seven to three. They're still going to have to hold him on. And Holderman's a plus three hold rating, which makes this a plus one. 
So he's going to try for the lead. Two through five or a 12. Seven does not get the lead, so, but he will be held. And Dansby Swanson is your batter. 4-4, four, four, and it's a ground ball shortstop X, but with a righty batting, the shortstop is not the one doing the holding. It's the second baseman, so the shortstop Marcano will keep his full complement of defense, which isn't good. He's a 4-E-12. Four, 4 and a 6 is most likely a base hit. 4 and a 6 is an SI-1. That's a 12, and he is an E-12. So it's 12 and a 12 for shortstop. There is no 12 for an error, but it is an SI-1 single, which is going to move Horner to second base. So runners at first and second with nobody out for E and Hap. Again, no one being held. 2-5, and that's a walk that's going to load the bases. So now Holderman having issues. As he can't seem to get it done, but they don't want to burn both their left-handed relief pitchers in the same game where they're losing 7-3, to three, so I think this is Holderman has to take one for the team here. Even though it's just opening day, you don't want to blow, the, blow out the bullpen in one game. So infield is in. Try to choke the runoff. 2-6, and that is a pop-up to short, so that definitely helps infield fly rule. And there's one away, and now double play will get him out of the inning. And Trey Mancini is up. Doesn't hit in too many double plays, though, so the infield is going to stay in. Very few chances for a double play. Not too many ground ball A's there, so infield is in. Holderman, 5-10. And that's a ballpark single check. That's a 12. He's only a 1 to 5, so he lines it to short. And that's out number 2. So Holderman catches a break there. Two outs. Base is still loaded. Infield back to normal now for Jan Gomes. As Holderman tries to wiggle his way out of this inning. 5-7. And he will not. It's a single. Single to center field. Horner will score. Swanson not being held. He already runs at a 15. Not being held is a 16. With two outs, it's an 18. The single is assumed to go to... Well, it is center field. It's not assumed. It is in center field. Center fielder Arm Zuwinski checks in as a zero. So we said one, two... So it's basically a 1 to 18 because he's a 1 to 15, 1 to 16, not being held 2 is 1 to 18. So they're not going uh, with two outs though. I think you got to send him. You got I mean you got to throw through. You don't have any choice. You're not really hurting anything if you let the runners advance, you're not really hurting anything. So they're going to even though it's futile, they're going to do it anyway. And the runners advance. So the two run single and going to Third base is Hap on the throw, and going to second on the throw is Gomes. I don't normally let the batter go to second, but in this case I will. But like I said, it really doesn't matter. I mean, two more runs have come in now, so it's 9-3. to three, So it, at this point, they're just trying to get out of here and not use another ballpoint arm. 6-9. One to two is the end home run chance, but that's a six for a fly to right to end the inning. So the Cubbies put up two here in the bottom of the eighth off of Holderman. He goes one inning, faces seven batters. Gives up one, two, three hits. Two runs both earned. There was a walk thrown in there as well. No strikeouts. So Keller is projected to be the loser and Stroman projected to be the winner. As we go to the top of the ninth, and the Cubbies will bring in another relief pitcher to finish the game. And do up for the Pirates. It's Hayes, Zawinski, and Bay. So the Cubbies will pick one of their lesser pitchers. Obviously, with the score being what it is, it's a blowout. So they will go with Michael Rucker. 
Rucker, two and one with a 4.91 ERA, so that's why they're going with Rucker. Not going to worry about pitcher catcher hold rating because it's nine to three. They're not going to try to run anywhere. They're not going to hold anybody. We're just going to play it straight up. So here's Key Brian Hayes. Oops, sue a dice again. Happens more than it should. 6-8 against Rucker. is a ground ball second base X. That's Nico Horner. He is a 1, so we know he's going to get to it. So we don't have to roll the D20 with nobody on. And he's an E8. So basically we're trying to avoid, as an E8, the only error chances on an E8 for second base are 16, 17, and 18. Short of that, it's good play. And that is a 17, so it will be an error. Right here on an E8 second baseman, the errors are 16, 17, and 18, and well, lo and behold, we got a 17. So how about that? You think it's not going to be an error, and it turns out to be one. Second error of the game. Second error of the game on the second baseman. Nico Horner. So how do you like that? E4 to start the game. Here's or start the inning. Here's Zewinski. Another sewer dice. I don't know why it keeps happening. The, the border there is pretty tall. It should hold everything. 2 7. 1 to 6 is a double. That's a 13, though, so he flies to center. And that's one away. And that will send up G1 Bay. G1 Bay. 5-6 against the lefty is a ground ball second base A. It's a 4-6-3 double play to end the inning. And I'd forgotten to do the, and end the game actually, and I'd forgotten to do the left, the left on base and the hits for the previous inning. Not sure why I forgot to do that, but I did. It's a 9-3 Cubs win. So let's see over here. There was one hit. And nobody left on base because of the double play. Here there were th two hit, three hits rather. And one le uh, two left on. So, okay. So let's go to the totals for the Pirates. Oh, let's finish off Rucker first of all. One inning pitched. Three batters faced. No hits, no runs. No walks, no strikeouts. All right. So now for the Pirates, one. Well, we just come over here. We don't have to add all this up. We got the score thing right here. Five for their hits. Three runs, five hits. Did they make any errors? They did not. No Pirate errors. And they left on two, three, four, six. Total of six left on. So really on this on this thing here, I really only need to put to write down a left on base because the hits will be coming from the pitcher. But I do use these to get to the pitcher, so maybe I should still use them. We'll see. For the Cubbies, hits. Let's see. Let's go over here. That's a total of 13 hits. So nine runs, 13 hits. They did commit two errors. And left on base, two, five, six, seven, nine. Nine left on. All right, so that is your final. Let's move the tray out of the way. That is your final from Wrigley Field 2023. If you want to call it the opening game of the Demolition League, you can do so, but it's, it's an idea. I, I haven't full, gone full board with it yet, so I don't know if I'm going to have time to do it or not. It's just I felt like playing some some strat, and this was a way to do it. And I wanted to use these 2023 cards that I bought. So it gives me an excuse to use those as well. So kind of serving two purposes, if you want to look at it that way. My envelopes, there's so many cards that, use in, that they give you that my number seven coin envelopes are starting to fall apart a little bit too. But there's the envelopes for the Pirates and the Cubs. So to go with those other teams. So there you go. Um, like I said, don't know, my penmanship is awful. I admit it. Um, but hopefully everything came through. The card showed up okay. None of the um, accoutrements with the lineup boards and 
base runners and all that sort of good stuff. So, or the ballpark pictures or any of that stuff. So, trying to go more old school. I've gotten I got a lot of comments, or well not a lot, but I got several comments on that video from the other day where it was very analog, and people seem to really appreciate that better. So they can see the cards better. It's less distracting. So at least on Stratomatic, I'm going to be doing that now for inside pitch and other games. I may go back to use this method as well. We shall see. It's a work in progress, as they say. But from here, the Cubbies blow away the Pirates 9-3. to three. And uh, star of the game could give to Stroman. He went seven innings and gave up only one run. But if you're looking for an offensive star of the game, there are several. Horner had three hits. Uh, but you also had... Gomes with three hits, but you had Wisdom with a with a the home run and a single, Mastroboni with a two run homer, uh, also with a single. So there's lots of guys that that scored a couple runs or drove in a few runs. But uh, you can also give to Stroman for his good pitching. So it's hard to say. You can make the call on that as you see fit. So let's go do it from here. I'm not sure when I'm going to um, post this video as far as uploading it. It takes a while to upload. That's the problem when you record. It takes a lot while to upload rather than a live stream. I'm recording this on a Friday night. It's about 10 o'clock. Uh, yeah, it's right at 10 o'clock, actually. So the game took right around an hour, I think. Maybe a little less. Um, but, of course, on Saturday morning or Saturday afternoon, hopefully around noonish. It'll be the live presentation of the NBC Game of the Week, which I plan to use this score sheet and uh, or scorebook and uh, similar settings and go in with the analog and see how everything pans out. So until next time, enjoy playing whatever game you choose to play, how you choose to play it. I'll see you all down the road.